Pero esta... Victoria Sun. Ah, Victoria. It's 9 o'clock. It's 9 o'clock now. Yeah. So can you guys yeah. say this? Yeah. 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 We're, we're, you're not required yeah. to sign okay. in. Okay, we're saying that. You don't have to sign in. But if you're gonna speak, if you're gonna speak, you have to have some type of ID. Okay? You don't need an ID. You don't need an ID. You need a comment card. Right. A comment, comment card. Yeah, an ID. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. You do not need an ID. You can't identify the person. That's not true. Right. So Just she wants to make a comment. You must fill out the card. Yeah. yeah. But you don't have to have an ID. Okay. Are the cards there for you guys? No. You want to make comment? Yes, but okay. the cards aren't here. Get the get cards are over there. Over here. Get the yes. Cards. They're talking about we need an ID. I was like, we don't need an ID. Yeah, I was you like, straight man, up. you guys getting out of hand. We're, we're going straight south. I know. I'm like, shoot. Good morning. Good morning. So you guys will speak in the order in which I receive your card. I'll put a number on it, okay? It's today. In order that I received it from you all. So they have to sign in if they're going to do something. They don't have to sign in to come into the room, but they do have to sign the speaker card to speak. Okay. So, Hilda, do you want to go first? Wait, you want to go first? It doesn't matter. Okay. Hmm? Sí. Uh, uh, ponga en lo que quiere, en lo que quiere hablar. Yeah. What's your oh. subject? They're I put it right you. here, public comments. Oh, okay. I don't, ha I don't have to. Thank you. Mm -hmm. She says she's going to do it in whatever order. So. Yeah, I'm going to do it in the order that you guys turn them in to me. So, I'm going to get something. Todos juntos. Hmm? Escuchar. Todos juntos. Sí, está bien. Uh -huh. Viene César. Tú vas. Sí. Sí. Nancy, agarrame a mí también. I necesito yo estar en la, en la orilla. Huh? In the front? Okay. Oh. No, you can sit over there, I think. I don't know. I don't know how they have this set up. Huh? It's closer if we're going to record. Oh, but I guess when you record, you can just go on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, this is a pretty... Tom, which restrooms are the guests you think? Are the speakers you think? Yeah. I'm sorry, that's me. Yes. The public will see. And then we will think about it. That's the one over there. So can we do we crack that? But he said he wanted me to record the stuff at 10. But do you want me to record your comment at 9 too? Yeah. Here, let me. On this? On this? Yeah. How long is the battery? Just, just. You know, like, you're going to do it. I think I'll explain. But, you know, it's really 10 o'clock. I got to tell you. Okay, she needs to go through a duly uh, formed meeting and stand for election after which she will be seated on the board. We also have another nomination that the nomination board would like to put forward to the board, and that is Scott Yetter, who has been our representative from ACES. It has finished his one-year term, but the board and the nomination committee have asked him to agree to stay on as a member of the community on the board. And the nomination committee puts that forward and I believe we can vote on that now if there are no objections, but we need a motion. Second? Okay, all those in favor of Scott Getter staying on the board as a member of the community, please say aye. 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 Okay. Now, public comments on non-agenda items. Um, Scott? Yeah, 
Good morning. Um, I would like to first start off and say that I'm very disappointed uh, that again today as we try to enter this campus for for the board meeting, we were asked to sign in. That is a clear violation of the Brown Act. Again, we were asked to, to, to produce an ID in order to sign the speaker card, which is also a Brown Act, Brown Act violation. Good morning. My name is Lisa Rodriguez Guzman, founding parent of the Accelerated Schools, grandmother of an ACES student, health services coordinator from 2017 to 2019, sole TAS SDIU Local 99 Chief Stewards of 2019, and former TAS and Law School Site Council Chair. In 1994, when I enrolled my oldest daughter, Cristina, at TAS, I was elated that she was born to attend a fully a full day kindergarten program that promised me that I was going to be respected as an integral partner in her education and my input was critical for her academic and social emotional well-being and success. I, I, I like many parents and staff take pride in supporting our students and we volunteer countless hours of our personal time as this was the expectation and part of the Accelerated Schools model's mission and vision that we, together, would uplift our students and school community. One of the principal aspects of the Accelerated Schools model was to institute a school governance structure that ensured that all our voices were heard and respected. The governance structure convinced me that I had to make the right choice to enroll my three children at the Accelerated School. This community and its parents were promised a seat at that table. And we were told that we were going to be valued at the Thank as you. Part your of time has expired. Education. Thank you very much for your comments. Um, I am not sure uh, what this name is. Is it? Oh, Diaz. I'm sorry. And a real yes. I want to make certain that you understand you have double the time. You have four minutes because you are receiving translation. Okay. Please speak. Hola, buenos días. Mi nombre es Anabel Díaz. Hi, good morning. My name is Anabel Díaz. Soy madre del alumno de ACES. I'm a parent of ACES students. Uh, como saben, estamos muy inconformes por todo lo que pasa en la escuela, con la alimentación de nuestros hijos, con la regla que ponen ustedes, con las injusticias que cometen ustedes, as, como la injusticia de poner a ella. Uh, as you may know, we're very upset at the way things are being done at the school, in particular uh, the nutrition at the school, the injustices at the school, and also wanted to point out the unfair dismissal of Ms. Ida. Uh, Queremos que Ida regrese a su trabajo. Queremos explicaciones por qué corrieron a Ida sin justificación. ¿Con qué derecho la corren? We, we are asking that Ida be reinstated. We want reason as to why she was dismissed, and we want her to return to her position. Ustedes están ahí como nuestra directiva. ¿Quién los escoge a ustedes? Nosotros como comunidad no los escogemos. No los queremos ahí como nuestra directiva. You are here as, as the board of trustees, but who elects you? And I, as a member of the community, you, you, you do not represent us. Queremos gente justa. Gente que respete nuestros derechos, respeto de que respete los derechos de nuestros hijos. And we want just people, we want people who respect us, and we want people who respect the rights of our students. Su agenda, que la dan en inglés. ¿Por qué la agenda no debe estar en español cuando saben que viene a una comunidad que todos hablamos español? Your agenda, for example, is in English. Why isn't the agenda in Spanish when you know that the majority of the community is Spanish? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Queremos que ustedes vean que cometen injusticias que hacen lo que ustedes quieran por estar sentados ahí sin hacer nada por nuestros hijos a ustedes no les importa el estudio ni el progreso de nuestros hijos solo están ahí por un salario te lo digo así de frente we'd like, we'd like you to know that you know, you commit a lot of injustices and that I want you to know that you're there because you know, you're on position and that you receive a salary and I'm just going to you know, say it directly to you somos padres de los alumnos que están aquí en la escuela dándoles el ingreso a ustedes, deberían de respetarnos como padres, como lo que hicieron otra vez, de llamarnos la policía, 
de parar la junta, levantarse así, y ellos dicen y dejarnos como tontos, hablando solos. No entendemos qué es lo que les pasa. Si ustedes están ahí representando las escuelas, ¿qué podemos esperar desde el personal de las escuelas? We are, we are parents, um, parents of the students who attend your schools, and you must respect us and help build your schools. Um, but um, and, and uh, again, I repeat that you're not respecting the rights of our students. No vamos a descansar hasta que le diga a su puesto, porque es la única persona que nos ha ayudado a ver lo que tenemos que hacer para ayudar a nuestros hijos, porque ustedes, como mesa directiva, we again are urging Hilda to be reinstated to her position. She has helped us determine what is best for our children, how to help our children, unlike yourselves that sit on the board of trustees but do not assist the members of the community and the students. My, my children require special education, and if it weren't for Hilda, they would not be receiving the education that is necessary. You speak of violations, you speak of disrespect, but why don't you apply those same rules unto yourselves? We won't be silent like we were before. We're parents and we want justice. We want respect, we want answers to everything that you've done because it's not just for us. Thank you very much for your comments. I will um, just clarify one point. The members of the board receive no compensation. There is no salary. There is no money that the board earns from the work that we do for the Accelerated School. I just wanted to make that clear for everyone. Thank you for your comments. Okay. Um, Cesar Castro-Long. Great morning, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Yeah, everybody. Okay, thank you. Just call my name. I just want to make sure. All right, cool. Great morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Good morning. I guess, not, I guess you're not doing that well. Um, okay, well, uh, we've been here before, uh, and we're here again. Uh, we are members of the community. We've been in the community. This, 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 these streets raised us. These street, streets made us, and we are happy to still be here, thriving. Um, and uh, at the same time, we are here to to hold accountable folks that are coming into our community and uh, view our children as dollar signs. I appreciate the comment that you just made. I did not know that you all did not receive any compensation. And I love the fact that you took the time to, to address that. But I would love for you to take the time to address every, any other concerns that we have also brought. Um, a couple of meetings back, we, we questioned the diversity of, of, of this, of this uh, group of folks here. And um, when we demanded an answer, you all were like, we don't answer questions. So now the fact that you're answering a question, it's, you know, it's, it's interesting. We're just here once again to, to demand that Ilda is reinstated in her position. She is an amazing leader. She is a, a staple within the community. That's right. She has been involved in many, many, many spaces where she has not only empowered herself, but empowered members of the community. Right. And um, we know what's what's in the best interest of the community because we are that community. That's right, that's right. 30 seconds. 30 seconds, yeah, 30 seconds yeah. That's how we work here. <laughs> so we're here, we're not going anywhere. We would love, love to work something out sooner than later. We are not gonna go away until Hilda is reinstated. And we wanna make sure that all children, regardless of whether they're in a traditional public school or in a charter school, receive a dignified education. So with that being said, thank you. Have great holidays, enjoy your family, and let's hope we can move forward on this soon. Thank you very much for your comments. <laughs> okay, at this point, um, there are no other speakers for the annual meeting, therefore... Yeah, I would we'll like to speak, but I got to fill out a card first. That's correct. Let me have a card. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, just bear with me a little bit, okay? That's fine, and I'll tell you what. 
In order to expedite, you can fill out the card after you finish speaking, as long as you give us your name now. Okay, my name is Abdul Muhammad. I'm part of the community. I'm part of the community group ACE. And like she was saying, this lady is true of our community. She comes from the community. So why is she not still employed at this school? I remember, I remember when this was closed, matter of fact. The only reason you're here now, and I'm going to tell you the truth, because the party killed the pot. That's why you're here. Excuse me? Why, why are we here now? I'm sorry, I did not this school, catch you. The school is here in this spot because this is a clothing manufacturing company. You understand? Yeah. yeah. Now, there are two parties. One party killed the other party. That's why this school is here today. If it wasn't for that, the company would still be here. But it's a pillar in the community. It's good to be here. It should be an education institution that includes all the students in the surrounding community, not just pick the cream of the crop. But when you have community people working in institutions like this, this makes the school represent the community, not some outsiders coming in, want to teach what they want to teach. In other words, brainwash our children the way they want to brainwash them. Because when you pick from the lady, you want the cream of the crop, you want the cream off the top. That's the best. But the rest of our children are left behind because they can't access the education that you offer the other children for the cream of the crop. So I'm imploring you to rehire this lady to see the pillar of the community Plus, she represents the community. Plus, she stands up for the community and the staff at this school. So you need somebody like this on your staff. Don't be afraid of truth. Because the old saying, truth is set you free. But you want people that represent the community, that can speak to the community and understand. Because a lot of you are not from the community. And you don't understand the community, plus you fear the community. Thank you very, very so much. we would like you're, to you're, thank you very much. Your time has expired. Thank, thank you. you. All right. I would like to take the opportunity to introduce myself today. I was elected as the president. And we can't have a dialogue every time because there's business that the trustees need to do. But I did want to introduce myself. My name is Leonard Rubinowitz. I've been a member of this community and coming to this very spot we're standing on for 50 years. 50 years, okay? And I was one of the partners at the clothing manufacturing company. And the truth will set you free, and I want, as you said, I want to share that with you. I was married to Carol Little, the other partner. Carol didn't get murdered. One partner didn't kill the other partner. I'm not in jail. Well, but, that was the what that's what we got. I, I understand this. Excuse me. Excuse me. Let, let, let him have it. We're not talking to it's him. Okay. We're not talking to you. We're talking to you. We're talking to you. It's it's mano, okay. mano, all right? <laughs> so, I understand that. So, so, um, Carol <laughs> had some cancer for years ago. It was Carol and my decision to donate all of this land, most of this land. Oh, you need a translation? Do we have a translation device? There are earphones available. So, you and Carol go there. Yeah, I'm, wait, I'm just waiting for it. So, Carol and I, many years ago, made a decision to give all of this land to a nonprofit to help Jonathan and Kevin, who have a 30 student school, expand it. And contrary to other news that's not real, is that we weren't that rich. <laughs> this giving this land was really a big piece of what we had built up over our life. And it still is. So I've been coming to the school for 20 some odd years. I don't get paid a dime. Not a dime. Nobody else that's sitting up there gets paid. Nobody else has ever gotten paid. I don't get any money for my expenses. I drive down here, I pay for the gasoline. I don't get any benefits. Well, this time it's about to get paid. Yeah. So, one other thing. I married a woman 21 years ago who had three teenage boys. In the course of our marriage, 
we were blessed with those three teenage boys got married in the last five years. And each one of those boys had their own two little boys. So I have six grandsons and three sons. And I'll tell you what I've learned, which gives me some experience with the school, is that my wife's first love, and she first cares about her, the three boys, then comes six little grandsons. So there's, I'm number 10 <laughs> in the line of what my wife loves and takes care of. And what I want you to know is that, and I, and I accept that, and that's the way it should be. If you have children, your children come first before anything. So I accept that. And what I want you to know is we have about 1,850 children at this school. And that's a lot of kids, and to me, they come first. Now, there's been a lot of talk about Hilda, and I like Hilda. Hilda, you're great. I like Hilda, and I we appreciate her service. But there has been a lot of conversation nationally and in the state by LAUSD and here by the parents of the school. We do listen to the constituents of this school. And what we heard is that with 1,850 schools, we needed a nurse in that position. And it was very vocal. There were a lot, a lot of feedback. Yeah, about 16, 16 surveys according to what we received. About putting a nurse into the position. And the board doesn't make those decisions, by the way. It's a management decision. And it was decided that, we, uh, that in response to the community, and both locally and across the country, that we should have a nurse in that position. And that's the decision that was made. And it was made for the 1,800 of my children that are here. And if you appreciate children first, that's what this board is about. We'll never, even among a husband and a wife and, and, the, and the children, there's always this contention. Not everybody sees things the same way. But I want you to know that I speak from my heart and for the board. The reason we come here constantly, and for me for 50 years, is for the children. We want them to have an opportunity, a path out of poverty, a path to becoming successful in life, so to get a good education. That's what's in my heart. And so I can't each time have a dialogue, but I thought the, having been appointed today to the head of the board, that um, I speak to you from person to person. Well, what you just said, you needed a nurse. A nurse should have been written in when you started. <coughs> and that should have been automatic. You don't sacrifice one person to fill the sum on the spot. Or sacrifice her position and her job to fill another spot and have a nurse. That should have been just automatically. But that's just like saying, you sacrifice his job so you can put a nurse in the school. Well, and I'll, I'll address that when we conclude. But when we started, we only had 30 kids. We could barely afford a teacher, let alone Well, I know when you started, and there you since 1961. God bless you. See what? I think you were before me? Yeah, I was. <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> when you have 30 students <clears throat> and you can barely afford a teacher, you certainly can't afford a nurse. But you're right. I think we should have had a nurse earlier on. Just, you know, things ran. And <coughs> came to the realization and the community helped us realize that we did need a nurse. So we couldn't have one and write it in from day one. But we did come to the point and realize we needed one. Please again understand uh, that it's children first here. And give me a chance to, by the way. Julie has served us well and I thank her because uh, she brought new academic rigor to the school. Grace, our CEO, where are you? <laughs> has done that and a very proud of her as our principals and our teachers. Um, we've raised our teachers' pay in the past year, and this is all about making a better place for our kids. We work as best as we can on feeding them, and there are lots of restrictions. I've heard about food. The federal government has their fingers in the pot on what we can feed the students and what we can't. Lots of regulations. And it's not easy doing all of this. And I tell you, a lot of us spend a lot of time working very, very hard. And it's hard to do that and come in and be told that we're getting paid and that we're self-serving. We are not. I, I think 
you know, if I kept this money, I, I, I was pretty much retired anyway. I could, I, you know, wouldn't have to be here. But I'm here because I want the kids to have a better education and be a model for the country. Okay, we're going to have to get back to this. Okay. Before, before, before you, you sure. talk, I want to clarify, and I want you to make this a clear point because there seems to be some misunderstanding okay, this Mr. Robert French and Vincent She informed our our unit, our our SEI local nine, that the board made the decision to terminate my employment. Okay, not the management, but the board, and supposedly surveys determined my termination. We it took a very long time to get those surveys results, which we didn't get the comments, and to date I have not seen the survey results. The ones that we got supposedly that were sent to our union rep said 16 supposedly parents decided, not 1,100 students, parents decided to terminate my employment. So I, I, I recommend that you fact check because there's someone, someone here is lying to this board. And, uh, and lying to the public. Hilda, thank you. If I didn't correct about that, they, about whether the board ratified a management decision or not, I apologize. And I will tell you when you say 16 that I have personally heard from hundreds, literally. That's not everybody sent something in writing, but lots of people called, lots of people did send emails. There were a lot, not necessarily negative, but they, what they were saying was we want a nurse medical training. And all I have asked is for you to provide us that feedback, our union that feedback, which we have not received. And I have requested that feedback per the public record back that I still have not received to this day. And as you recall, it, it, it's also, it's not included in any of the LCAPs, it's not included in the, the school site council, and then the single plan for student achievement. So that's where it leads me to believe that you all terminated me in retaliation. That did not happen. Well, give us the facts. I, give I, us the facts. You know, give that us the proof. As a member of the board, that, that's happening. I actually do have council. School has council. And, 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 and it's that. also sad that me as a founding parent of over 25 years and an employee of close to 12 years to be terminated from employment while on temporary disability that shows the respect that you have for me and this community. Thank, thank, you, very thank much. you very much for your comments. And, and I appreciate everybody being here. Thank you. Uh, we have one more public speaker before we will go into closed session. Joe Stringer. Oh, right, right, right. Good morning to the board. It's a pleasure to be here. I heard one name since I've been sitting here. Hilton was fired with an email. I have one thing to say to that. She should be reinstated with an email. And I don't think it should be next week, the following week. It should be did or me. Now you have the guts and sit there and listen and look in this community. What, what do you have the courage and the guts to go ask the people that she have worked with those kids. How many would like to see her in, in back in, the, in her, 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 her oh, yes. farm of duty every day? I would dare you to ask her. Because most of them will. Now, I heard you say something about the parents and this and that. Parents did this, parents did that. When the parents do not attend these board meetings and things, and they have no other way of getting their news for what's happening. Where do it come from? He say, she say, I say, the board say. Like to say, the board prior. You asked something a few minutes ago. Can you state to me what the board prior? You have 30 minutes, 30 seconds. Can you state to me what the board fired for? For the nurse. So I'm going to.
You're asking a technical question? That's right, it's technical. And, and, and Hilda has counsel, I believe, and, and the school has counsel on the entire discussion. I need an answer. I, 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 I can't. I, I, I can't. I need an answer. But I can't answer. If I can't get an answer, every one of you that's sitting on that board will get your shit and walk out this door.
for the regular meeting at, at 10.06, calling the meeting to order. And again, getting my agenda. Uh, you ran out. For public comments. Thank you. Okay, so call the order. I would like you to see the uh, board agenda. I wanted to speak on the agenda item, which is, which was, is your agenda that you just approved, but I was not given the opportunity to speak on that action item that is the agenda. Go ahead, Hilda. Okay. Two minutes. Okay. Good morning. Um, you, you just approved the agenda item for, for the October 24, 2019 board meeting, and I'm very concerned uh, because the chain of events are not reflected on that agenda that you, on that agenda, on that, uh, the board minute meetings um, that you, that, no, I'm sorry, not the agenda, the board meeting minutes. Oh, are, we haven't looked at the minutes just yet. Okay, so then I'll wait for my comment. That's what I wanted to speak on. Okay, you may uh, speak to that now. Okay, so that, that's just my concern that I know it's a draft, but I wanted to bring to your attention that the chain of events that happened in your draft meeting that's not actually what took place. There's audio, there's video, that I, there's audio that I've obtained from uh, the accelerated schools, and that, that draft of their agenda is not accurate. It, it, it leaves uh, information out. For example, when, you took, when this board took recesses more than once and took action, that's not reflected on your draft minutes that I think that you need to change to make it according to the record and to according to what actually took place at that meeting. Because again, I would like to remind this board that there's audio, there's a video of that board meeting, and it is, it, it's not the same. It's very misleading and it's not appropriate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Okay, um, where's Wayne? Talk to me about the minutes at this point, because we have a comment about that. We haven't included the minutes yet. Sure. Well, first off, there's nothing in the full down act about minutes. Minutes are actually something that before the board and for the public to know what happened and to sort of have this open. So any action that is taken by the board needs to be noted in the minutes. Any general conversation, it doesn't have to be word for word. It can be very much a uh, summary. So for instance, if there's five minutes of conversation amongst the board, then that can be included in one sentence if it's just a general conversation. Specifics should be added. Uh, but the most important thing is that, that, that uh, any kind of board action should be noted in this. Uh, public, uh, public comment can be summarized briefly. Uh, I don't know specifically what the uh, very specific in that discussion, so I don't know, you know, if there's, I, I heard that there was a, it action was action. That was taken yeah. and was not included in the minutes. I would want to know what that action was and what the situation was around that in order to, to fight it. 
Okay, I can tell you that um, we recessed for a moment, and it was determined that we would be unable to carry on with the board meeting, therefore we should call the board meeting closed. Uh, yeah, I would like to admit. Yes. Okay. Thank you. That's not true, but okay. Okay, so if you would take a look at the minutes. And uh, we have noted an exception from the audience. because this board did not give me the opportunity to represent the ACES community. So I'd just like to remind this board that I never got an email back response from Ms. Figueroa giving me the opportunity to serve on this board representing ACES parents, as well as did not give this community and myself the opportunity to serve as a community rep like you extended the opportunity to Mr. Yen. We'd just Thank like you. to remind you that. Thank you. Okay. Um, Okay, so uh, Scott Yetter is our first uh, public comment. Good morning, members of the board, staff, and community members. Thank you for being here this morning. My name is Scott Yetter, and um, as as Julie mentioned earlier, I'm I'm a parent. Um, I have a son who attends ACES, and um, I also have had kids attending ACES since 2009, and have been very involved in the school during that time. I'm also a community member, I've been lived in the community for more than 20 years. Uh, I taught at Belmont High School. Uh, more recently, for the last 19 years, I've served as a pastor in the community. Uh, I live a block from my church, and um, I serve, I serve served for 13 years under a Chilean pastor, um, and more, more recently have served for the last five years co-pastoring with a Peruvian pastor. I, I serve under a board that's majority Latino. We, we conduct our meetings in Spanish. Um, and, and I care about this community deeply. I care about the school deeply, and that's why, that's why I'm serving here. Uh, I share that because um, I, I want I want the community members to be aware that there are there are board members that are a part of the community and that care deeply about the community that they live in. And um, I also um, I've I've gotten to know the board members over the past two years, and each one of them, um, Mr. Leonard shared some of his personal story, but each one of them have made tremendous sacrifices. Um, I've grown to respect them a lot for their care for the school and what they've sacrificed to be a part of the board. 
I share that because as we come together, I think we have we have a potential and an opportunity. There's some parents here to make to, to make this school the best school it can possibly be. It's going to be by all of us working together, community members, parents, board members. Time. Thank you very much. Our, our clock didn't start on time, but they were keeping track. So yeah. thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, Convenient. Okay, go ahead. This is Wayne Strumper. He is one of our legal counsel. Good morning. I was going to introduce myself. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to point out one thing. There was a, uh, I have advised the board on Brown Act for today's meeting, and there was a, a comment that uh, in order to speak, to fill out speaker forms, uh, that you would have to show your ID. <coughs> that is, that, that, sorry, that's inaccurate. Uh, I, I uh, gave counsel uh, to staff here that they were to take names of the camp because you have to have identification of who's speaking, right? But you don't have to give your name. You can say speaker number one, speaker number two. You can call yourself X if you want to. But something that identifies you so that when the, the board calls you to speak, they know it's you, right? That this is common sense. So, but there was no uh, request for identification during that process. I just want to make that point for the record. Uh, there actually was the security guard over and, 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 and so in public comment, the other thing too with the Brown Act, in public comment, you have to be called upon by the board to speak. So that way we can kind, of, kind of keep a uh, structured process of the, of the I understand. Board. I just want so, to clarify that, that I was asked for my ID.
to happen in evenings or weekends so that parents, students, and residents can actively provide input on school matters. Two, we want our parent representatives as outlining tasks for charter admission to be officially seated on the board of trustees. Three, we want our South LA Latinx, Black, and working class families represented on the board of trustees. We want a voice in the selection process for task board of trustees. A board comprised of a white male majority does not reflect the cultural and racial diversity of the neighborhood. Task serves. We demand tasks for sin, the unjust and illegal dismissal of tasks, health service coordinator, and founding parent of tasks, and South LA resident, Isla Rodriguez Guzman. Isla was terminated July 2019 in retaliation for her union and community activism. Her union at CIU Local 99 also filed unfair legal practice against tasks, and community members have rallied in her defense. Task the fifth, task must immediately stop the routine practice of canceling scheduled board meetings. Task the past has suddenly and without reason canceled program meetings, effectively shutting out community members, parents, students, and stakeholders from the sole avenue for input to those charged with leaving three schools in South LA serving 1,800 students and families in the areas. These demands must be met. Task and board of trustees are serious about continuing to serve the South LA community and respect the residents. Thank you very much for your comments. Um, <coughs> Ana Real Díaz. Hola, mi nombre es Ana Irene Díaz. Primero que nada, creo que deberían de tener un intérprete que traduzca y que sea profesional para hacerlo. Hi, my name is Ana Real Díaz. First and foremost, I'd like to request that there's a professional interpreter here uh, to be able to do the job of interpreting adequately. Me voy al tema que tocaron a la persona que es, va a ser el representante de los padres. Uh, creo que nadie, no, como, yo como madre, no recibí para votar para que representara a los padres. Creo que deberían de tomar nuestro voto para elegir nosotros al representante de los padres. De los um, and I'd also like to touch on what you mentioned previously, which is the parent representative for ACES. Um, I would like to have been informed about that and also know if my vote is taken into because myself as a parent, as a member of the community, uh, I did not elect um, this, this, this individual to represent ACES. We should have a bigger voice in that process. Um, we haven't voted on that. Esperamos que le devuelvan su trabajo. No vamos a descansar, vamos a seguir. Si tenemos que hacer protestas, lo vamos a hacer donde las tengamos que hacer para que ella vuelva a su trabajo. And uh, to reiterate on Hilda, uh, we want her to be returned to her position. We'll continue to be here until that happens. We'll protest if we need to and where we need to. Digo con lo que el señor dijo que donó la propiedad. Dice que él no gana nada. Lo hace porque no era rico. O sea, nosotros sabemos que lo hace. Él tuvo su beneficio. Le recortaron impuestos. No lo hace todo grande. Todos ustedes llevan algo para ustedes, una conveniencia para ustedes, por eso están ahí. Dicen que ustedes no ganan, pero ellos sí ganan, ellos sí ganan. Ustedes llevan un objetivo en estar ahí, un beneficio también. And I'd like to point out um, to, to you, uh, Mr. Rabinowitz, who said you donated this property for the school, that you were wealthy, but in some ways you benefited, right? You benefited in a reduction of your taxes. And in some ways, you all benefit by sitting on this board and being here. And we're not fools. Don't try and fool us. We know, you know, we've been told that Hilda was dismissed and that there's been a shortage of funds at the school, yet here standing in this meeting, there's four securities that have been hired just for the school. And I urge you to take into take into account our comments and to not and to not dismiss what we're saying here today. The right thing so that we as parents are satisfied and happy with the way this school is running. If I had the choice to elect whether or not you sat on the board, I would not vote for you, any of you. And if I could not vote for you twice, I would. 
y las veces que fueran necesarias para que fuera un no. Y creo que muchos padres de aquí lo harían también. And as many times as necessary, and I think many parents who are here with me today are the same sentence. Todos queremos en nuestra comunidad porque ustedes así lo hicieron, porque todos lo han hecho mal, lo hacen a su conveniencia. Queremos que vean por nuestros hijos, el bien de nuestros hijos, porque ellos son el futuro. Ustedes todos también son el futuro de ustedes. We don't want you in our community because things aren't being done right. We want the best for our children and for their education. Thank you very much for your comments. Um, on this, uh, Jorge Roman. Good morning, folks. I uh, haven't planned on speaking today. I uh, I heard some comments that I think did require, uh, or at least I wanted to at least speak on it. Um, you have an opportunity right now to move forward. I think uh, to start fresh. Uh, there'll be a big break from now until the next board meeting to really reflect on what you really want to do here, how you want to go about it, and um, and whether you're going to do it, bring the community along, or fighting against it. Uh, and cherry picking your parents isn't the first approach it should be taken. I think that that um, uh, it's wonderful that there's a USC connection. Um, if there's, it's always a good thing to, to, to have uh, educated people um, who, who uh, can provide some input. But there's plenty of, uh, uh, there's plenty of, of life experience that, that uh, the community can, can provide. And it should be represented on the board as well. Uh, some things that were said, uh, I do want to mention uh, with regards to uh, Ilda's employment. Now, yeah, Ilda, Ilda um, when she was let go, and I'll call it being let go uh, for now, she, she was replaced by a, a, an RN, right? I spoke with this RN, the, one, the first one at least, before she you know, abruptly left, right? I spoke with her, she told me that the workload was excessive. She had communicated that to the HR person because she needed help. So it, it was not. So it's a situation where it's not either or. You can have both, and I do want to uh, mention that there are opportunities. There are positions that you yourself have that could have been afforded to Ilda and can still be afforded to Ilda. She can be working for you. There's a there, are, and if you don't have a position, make one. You're sitting on on, on, on enough resources to do that. Uh, there's a parent organizer position. That's something that could work for you. Um, and I think that it, it, it's a good opportunity to reflect and move forward for next year. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Okay, our final comment for um, public comment is Leonard Rubinowitz. I, I submitted a public comment. I believe you had your public comment earlier. That was at the other board meeting. No, I, I, I have you here having spoken. I, I just gave it, I gave it to you. Well, Mr. Rabinowitz just signed up late. Why can't she just sign up? Fine, go ahead. You know, th th this is the part that's upsetting, you know? Uh, Mr. Getter got an opportunity to stand up here without the, the, the thing. He got an opportunity without being reminded that, his 30, that we were close to 30 minutes, but yet all of us get the reminder and get treated indifferently. Th this is what I'm talking about here. Like many parents and staff, we take pride in supporting our students, and we volunteer countless hours of our personal time as this was the expectation and part of the Accelerated Schools model, mission, and vision. That we together uplift our school community. One of the principal aspects of the Accelerated School model was to institute a school governance structure that ensured that all of our voices were heard and respected. The governance structure convinced me that I had to uh, it, that I had made the right choice to enroll my, enroll my three children at the accelerated schools. This community and its parents were promised a seat at that table, and we were told that we were valued as partners in our children's education. Sadly, as the years have gone by, the accelerated schools have significantly veered from its promises and commitments to our parents, students, staff, and South LA community. I remain optimistic that we together can reestablish a democratic school governance structure in which all our voices are respected and heard. We place the ball in your court to make this first 
throw as we are ready, willing, and able to work with you and the school management to rebuild the accelerated schools to its foundational principles. Please know that we are woke, we have risen, and we will no longer allow our voices to be excluded nor silenced as the accelerated schools belongs to our students and community. Please let that sink in. This is our community, and we demand to sit at that table. Oh, right. keep, keep it oh, That's private. Keep it Once again, I, I, I'm here uh, <laughs> commenting on public comments. Uh, it's something I heard. And I, I want you to understand the motives. I heard during the last public comments that uh, although we gave the school property to the nonprofit to, to be a school, uh, we were able to take a tax deduction. And I wanted to let you know, unequivocally, that given to the school by Carol Little and myself, and neither of us received a tax deduction or a reduction in our personal taxes. Don't, if you're laughing at me, which is hurtful. Uh, we did not receive a tax deduction of any kind of state, local, or federal taxes. We were unable to deduct this gift from our personal taxes because of regulations within the tax code that limit certain gifts based on income. We didn't have the income to offset this gift and it expired without us using it. It was a gift from the heart, not an economic gift. Thank you very much. Sir, can I ask you a question? Sir? You are not recognized. Why? Why am I not recognized? Because this is not a conversation, it's public comment. And if you'd like to comment, you're more than welcome. I'll put a card in. I'll be glad to. But I just want to ask him. You are to speak. Okay, sir. Why is it, I heard you say there were thousands of people against him that come in, I mean, they were against her. Why aren't some of them here? If they were so against her, why aren't they here saying why they didn't want her to teach no more? I don't understand that. Can you ask me that? You said thousands. Where are they? Yes, please. Uh, we have Wayne, our, uh, Wayne Strucker, Mr. Strucker, our legal counsel. I, I just want to explain that, that and, and, and Hilda's mentioned a couple of times there might be a Brown Act violation here or there. The, the board has to be very careful in responding and having a conversation. Well, on some, no, let, let, can I finish? Just let me finish. So you understand. I just want to try to help you understand. I'm not trying to lie with you. I'm just trying to help you understand. That if it's not on the agenda, they cannot have a substantial conversation with you about this item, right? Because that would be a Brown Act violation, right? Yeah. You know the Brown Act, yeah, yeah. They, they right? So, 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 so no, they, they do not. But, but it also, it also, I don't understand all the Brown Act. I see what's going on. I, I don't have a, I didn't want to bring it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just wondering what I know. Yeah. 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 But the laws, right, right, for, for better or for worse, the law still applies to them. Yeah, but the law still applies to them. Having a conversation back and forth between you and you. I don't understand what that would be done with the board. You got to go by the Brown Act, the White House, this out. It don't make no sense. Well, Ilda well, seems to think it, 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 it matters. She brings it up a lot, right? So yeah, because they're constantly so, so, no, so, I don't. So, right. But, but what I'm, I'm just saying is the board has to be careful what they say back. So it's not a, a matter of we're not going to talk to you. They, under the law, and it applies to them, no matter where you are, they, they can't go very far, right? Leonard has gone about as far as he can without violating the Brown Act, so there can't be that conversation. Also, for a board meeting, right, under the law, board meetings cannot be disruptive. So there is a, a way, an organization way of doing it, right? There's organ, and if she allows you time to talk, then that's fine, but, but it is their meeting. Also, I don't think I I'll time. let you talk all you want. She asked me to, to explain it. I was just trying to explain it. I'm not trying to fight with that. Just trying to explain to you what they were doing. Okay. okay. Thank you. If you, if you would like to speak, please do that now. You have two minutes. Okay. And we'll, we'll have you fill out a speaking card when you're finished. I think when I was here before, I said 
one reason why I see a problem is because there's no, not too much diversity on your board. And I said that before. I don't remember all the people that were here. And I asked you how many people were on the board. I think you said 12. Eight. Eight? Well, then were you to be, it, was, it was just eight? Eight. I thought you said 12. Never been more than eight. OK, well, whatever. But what I'm saying is, I see a problem here. And when I was at that school, what really bothered me, I didn't see nobody look like me in those classrooms. I don't know why that is. And that really set me off because I'm saying, if this is supposed to be a community, I know there's other people in this community other than what I saw. So what I'm saying to you, why is that? I don't know, I'm asking. I don't have children in school, but I'm here. And like you say, you're here, and you don't, you sir, you say you don't get paid. You doing this out of the goodness of your heart, right? Well, I'm doing this out of the goodness of my heart. The only thing I get paid for is when I see that the things are done right. And I should, I think there should be somebody here that when you say it's a thousand people that went against her, why aren't some of them here? And nobody's been here since I've been to two meetings. Nobody was here from, that was against her, but we are for her and that should tell you something. Remaining. I'm finished. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, I, I want this thing to work, and I want it to work right. If I, I'm in this community, and so are they, you're supposed to represent us. I don't see it, and we will be here as long until we get that done. And the brother that's up there, he just he been gone. Well, he hasn't years, said anything, and he's and he just now showing up. Right. I didn't see him in the last time. And is that, is that the lady here? Is she Mexican or Spanish? Are you Mexican? You going on the board? I was raised in this community, yes. Are you, are you Latino? Or I, I get that mixed up. I don't know, but I don't mean no harm by saying it because they call us all kind of names, too. So what I'm saying is, are you Hispanic or what? Okay, that's a good thing. But see, you finally doing it. But you need more, you need more. Because you all, probably, most of you don't even live here, and I know it. Okay, thank you, your time is up. Thank you so much for your comments, I appreciate it. What am I supposed okay, to say? Okay, public comments are now closed. We want to go ahead to the agenda. And the agenda is what we carry.